Gumbo Kong, Gumbo Monkey King He likes to fight and he likes to sing Let's see what we got here Alterna Comics I heard about these guys What are they doing? How are these so good and so affordable? $1.50 I don't understand Is this what I think it is? But how? How? What the f***? We have a visitor. Ah, uh, I'm sorry, sir. We are. Cl hey, Captain. Nondor? I was wondering if I could take you up on your offer and come on board to promote my new project. When I was on before, I was just a child. But after the season's campaign, I've become. a man. I'm ready to show the world what I'm capable of. I took your advice and embraced my name and my power. I even have my own intro to play on the show. Dude, I love the sound of that. Let's hear it. Whether you're Brian or Ryan or John, you know your mama hates you because you know she made you wrong. You need a manly name that can get you through the door. You need a manly name that leaves the ladies wanting more. Nondor, Nondor, you need a cool manly name like Nondor. Nondor, Nondor, you need a cool fucking name like Nondor. Whether you're Brian or Absolutely not. I'm not going to play that on the show. What made you think I would? Hey man, you're the one that said you only get what you asked for. I'm just following your advice. You haven't created a man. You've created a monster. Whether you're Brian or Ryan or John, I kind of like it. Shut it, Nega Keith. Let's start the show. Well, all of the whiskey and all of the wine, I'd make you John mind if I just said the time. Yeah! Yeah! Well, bounty a plenty of broad by mine, but now I suffer the sons of time. Yar! Yar! We sail the in, we sail the out, we sail from death with a furless shout. Yar! Yar! In all the tales they told to me, the river still fights to its sea, and we, we all go down to the ten man's cove. Yar! Yar! Yahar, yaho, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever and whenever you are. I am the King of Inks. I am the captain of the comic ship. I am Ryan Wynn. And I lay claim to such titles because I've been making comics and music for the last 20 years. And uh, that's why we like to talk about music and comics on this show. You may know me from uh, things like Gods and Gears, but I also spent many, many years inking things like Wildcats, Batman, The Darkness, and other things like that. I also have a creator-owned book called Death Betty that I co-created and drew. It's available on Comixology. Uh, I have a book called Hammerella that I am drawing, I, that I am writing, drawing, lettering, coloring, uh, and coloring with the help of my friend Ben Soto, who has come on uh, to do color assist. Uh, that book is, let's say, it's uh, over 80% done. We are, we got about another probably month or so of doing work and production to get it out to you guys. Um, hopefully it doesn't take much longer than that. And the links for that are down below if you haven't backed it, but I feel like you guys have all backed it. Uh, we do have a serious, uh, note real quick. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on in the world right now. I'm sure all of you know, and have heard about what's going on in Afghanistan. And we have a lot of friends and family who have been heavily affected by not just that war, but the, the wars leading up and the, and the wars afterwards. And if you are having trouble dealing with any of this, or if a lot of this stuff is, is too much for you. You need somebody to talk to. We have a hotline down below for the wounded, or the number down below for the Wounded Warrior Hotline. Um, they are they are an institution that is designed to help in such matters. Um, especially if you just if you just feel like you need to talk, sometimes that can do a lot for you. That can like speaking the words of the things that are bothering you can sometimes lift the weight of them off of you. So we here at the comic shop uh, comic ship highly recommend that. Uh, we're going to shift tone now. We're going to try to bring it up and have a lot of fun for this next hour uh, because that's what we like to do. We like to set sail and forget about the rest of the world. And I can't do that alone. I can't even do that with just you in the chat. I got to I got to have I got to have special friends that can help me with this. I got to have a first mate. I got to have a guy who's maybe written a book called Magna the Last Pantheon and maybe written a book called Black Tiger Hidden Dragon. 
Uh, maybe he has a website called beyondtimecomics.com, uh, and there's links for that down below where you can get all the info for his books. Maybe we're going to all say hello to him right now. Let's bring him out. Mr. Hervey, you know him, you love him. You harm and you ho. Thanks, Captain. Appreciate that. You know, uh, if you if you guys hear anything in the background, it is the power of Nandor. He's summoned like the storms and the winds and the thunder and the rain because my name isn't Nandor. You hear that? Well, he's I not just a said kid. his name and it thundered. He's not a kid. So no. he's letting you know. And that's so funny. Uh, before we got uh, started, you guys, I was talking to John. I was like, hey, man, your mic is dragging across your shirt. I hear this rumble sound. And he's like, no, nah, man, that's that's the power of God outside the window. <laughs> because I didn't I didn't, didn't even register that that would be thunder that I'm hearing um, crashing yes. through. Uh, yes. let's, let's see who we got. We got uh, Infinity Comics is joining us. Uh, What's so up, stream- Alex? Oh, I guess he had a stream similar time or something planned that was canceled. Uh, that's too bad. I know you were supposed to have, I think, Krager on earlier. Jason Krager. Um, good friend of mine. Good friend of the channels. Uh, nice. We got Arisaga in the chat. Hell yeah. yeah Woo. What is up, Arisaga? Good to see you, Brian. Yeah, I just backed his book this last week. Took Excellent. me a minute. Took me a minute. You had to get the funds squared away. But uh, I'm in there. That's how it goes, man. We got Jay Lee saying, hey, gang, what is up, Jay Lee? What's up, Jay? And we have Jason from Unhinged Entertainment. Jason. Uh, Absolute 2. His book is available now. I guess that makes four. Two. Yeah. Yeah. What are you doing? Come on. What are you doing? You said that was your special friend. (laughs) (laughs) The bus, the short bus just dropped off, Mr. Hervey. Now we can get to counting. Drop me off. Uh, We have the Canucks saying, hey, Ryan and John. Uh, Oh, hi, Denny. Konnichiwa, oh hi, Denny. What is up? And we have Eric, the guapo. Guapo. <laughs> and, uh, oh, the Canuck says he's on vacation. Hell yeah, two weeks off. Nice. Man, and, that's uh, that's how you do it. Oh, and Infinity says, Krager is tomorrow. Good, I didn't want to miss that. And uh, today was uh, Kale Roberts. All right, sorry that got canceled. Uh, Infinity is always a good time. Go sub and watch. Uh, meanwhile, I am taking up way too much time here. John? has something for us because John likes to go out to the, you know, the nether regions. He likes to go out beyond to find the booty for you guys. And are you ready? You ready, ready Captain? You Let's look do ready. it. You look like you're ready to dance in the background. Man, I'm, re- I'm ready for the music, man. Let's go. <laughs> well, then it's time. Let's do it. It's time for... So look, guys, All last right. week, there was no justice and no peace for Booty from Beyond. As Judge Nega Keith, he gave an absolutely terrible ruling in my, me and the suit that, that Brian and I had against the other Ryan from Alakazam Comics for absconding with my booty. That's, okay? right. That's right. But at the end of the show, that last show, Ryan, the other Ryan recommended Jaime Hernandez's Queen of the Ring. So this actually spurred my uh, booty for this week which is called Woe Nelly. So Woe Nelly is a spinoff from Love and Rockets, mm-hmm. which is a comic book series from the Hernandez brothers. And uh, see, I say any other name other than Nandor, and Nandor <laughs> brings the thunder. <laughs> That's right. So there's, there was uh, Gilbert, Aime, and Mario, the Hernandez brothers. And this was actually one of the first comics that I was really aware of in the alternative kind of comic book movement of the 1980s. Mm-hmm. And they produced stories, but they were kind of they they each produced their own stories that were kind of independent, somewhat independent of each other, but in the same universe. Uh, so, you know, admittedly, um, I was kind of someone that read some stuff on and off. Some of the stories resonated with me, some of them not so much. But my all-time favorite story uh, arc is 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 Aime Hernandez's Woe Nelly which mm-hmm. was originally published back in 1996 and it's a three issue miniseries. So the story, it focuses on two uh, characters that are more of like minor characters in kind of the, the love and rockets lore. One is uh, Sochil, uh, La Terrible Nava, and the other one is uh, Gina Bravo. And there's a lot of pre-existing history regarding these characters in love and rockets, but you don't need to know any of that to enjoy the story. So, True. Yeah, you learn in the story that uh, So used to babysit Gina as a kid, and 
Yeah, Nandor, I'm sorry I said a name that wasn't yours. But, but they um, kind of bonded over their mutual love of <laughs> wrestling. So mm -hmm. the uh, uh, older uh, Sochil and, and Gina, they grew up and they had a dream of conquering the pro wrestling circuit as a tag team. Uh, but the backstage of the story is it's like, you know, it's kind of the drama, the backstage politics, the clashing of egos and, you know, kind of threatens their friendship. But the story is really fun. And uh, the art is absolutely exquisite. It really has mm -hmm. kind of that 1980s wrestling feel to it. Um, you know, so you have like, you know, just that kind of feel of, you know, local old school wrestling in a gym. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, Jaime Hernandez is a master of figure drawing. I mean, people oh, yeah. of all kinds of shapes and sizes and ages. And the book, the funny thing about this book is it actually kind of takes me back to um, a, a movie back in the day that I loved. It was very, very cheesy movie <laughs> called All the Marbles. <laughs> Which starred Columbo, Peter Falk. That's right. And it had a uh, uh, Vicky uh, Frederick and Lauren Landon, and they were the California Dolls. And it was just like a lighthearted kind of a thing with, with um, you know, mm -hmm. hijinks. And they basically, you know, wrestlers and their buddy who's a manager who's fallen from grace. They're trying to regain their self-esteem. Well, Wo Nelly has that same kind of lightheartedness, but also kind of uh, uh, you know, a feel of. Of, of two two women who are trying to find their place and mm -hmm. are trying to make something out of themselves. So it's a really well crafted story with eye catching artwork. And um, you know, I still am seeking retribution against the other Ryan from Al Alakazam <laughs> Comics, but I got to give him props for bringing this to the forefront of my mind. So uh, for now, I suppose I have to thank him. Uh, for reminding me about this Jim Wonelli, which is this week's I let right. that one go a little longer because I was oh, having fun watching I was dance. It, man. <laughs> you know, if I had known, I would have stretched. There's, there's something about John dancing. It's like it's infectious. It gets my shoulders going. I'm like, oh, yeah, let's do this. Uh, gets the mood going. Um, great choice. Yeah, the Hernandez brothers, um, amazing work. If you're not familiar with them, like John had said, um, amazing draftsmanship. Um, if you're a fan of like Alex Toth work, oh, uh, yeah. very prevalent in, in their work. Um, I would have never connected it to that, to that movie, but once you did, I was like, I bet they were inspired by that. That's the perfect, their, their age group would have yeah. been, you know, high schoolers going to see that movie and like absorbing all that stuff. And then my other note on the Hernandez brothers is a um, couple, couple of Hispanic dudes um, from, from the barrio that are able to write stories that connect to everyone of every race, color, creed, class, group, uh, rich, poor, white, black, gay, everything. Like yep. I've never seen creators that just cross over yeah. as much as the Hernandez brothers do with uh, with their fandom and stuff like that. So excellent I agree choice. with that wholeheartedly. Excellent choice. Uh, oh, uh, Simon and Seven noticed a uh, new John. Yeah, and I'm um, feeling brand new. You like that? Look, it's label this John. He's got no. Oh, that's our Streamyard setup. I was like, there's no name there, and it's no hair. He's like, he's he's trying to go incognito. But I know we, we know it's him. Um. Anyways, let's bring out our man on the street. What do you say, you guys? It's, I think it's it. time for Mr. Blastbeat to make his way out here. I'm gonna see. Is he ready? Are you ready back there, Mr. Blast? He is ready. Welcome aboard, Mr. Blastbeat. There's the man. Yeah, it was a wild weekend. But while I was backstage, I realized something because like, no one noticed it. If you look at the chat, I made a comment about a joke John made during his segment, and then the light bulb went off. In this chat, whether it's on this show or I'm a fan somewhere else, I'm doing MST3K. That's what I'm doing. That's what this chat is, at least for me. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah, you know. Anyone that doesn't know, it's Mystery Science Theater. Yes, 3, Mystery Science. Yeah, I guess not all of y'all went to high school in the 90s. That was Saturday uh -huh. morning every weekend. So, <laughs> Are we ready and, for the uh, record of the day? 
Man, are are ready. you ready for the record of the day, Brian? I'm constantly ready. Let's go to the streets of Los Angeles. Man on the street. Man on the street. Take it away, Brian. Okay. So I'm a little distracted today. I was thinking about how I'm going to do this because this is ooh, this is a classic here. I think I'm going to split this one in half. The 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 report, the essay, whatever you want to call it, the, the dialogue about the album. We're going to talk about the music next week in part two. Today, we're going to talk about the cultural impact of The Fragile by Nine Inch Nails. All right. So I got the email. Remember, every Friday, we get our talking points from the CIA and the Illuminati. And since we're in the Illuminati, we have to follow their orders. They said this week's theme is iconic frontmen. <coughs> Trent Reznor is right. a pretty iconic front man. He mm -hmm. is not just the songwriter and the lead keyboardist and the lead guitarist and the lead singer and the lead everything in Nine Inch Nails. I'm pretty sure he drove the bus at one point. I mean, he boss hogs that band. He's in charge. You do what he says. says mm -hmm. All right. This was the era where that whole thing almost came off the rails. Okay. Because this was released in 99, recorded in 98. Again, I'm not fully prepared today. That's why the internet exists. So with an asterisk, let's double check. I think the years were 93 to 98 was when he lived in the Sharon Tate house on Cielo Drive. I mean, Charles Manson, once upon a time in Hollywood, mm -hmm. he was the owner of that house during those years. And <laughs> the, the cool thing is there was actually some really good albums got made in that house. The first two Marilyn Mansons, Downward Spiral, the Fragile, the first Filter album. There was more. Like, it, it's a giant, huge mansion, right? So the, we can put some equipment in here. But imagine the downside of that. That place got so off the rails so fast when you have yeah. Trent Reznor, Marilyn Manson, and Richard Patrick of Filter just going substance abuse crazy in the California countryside. Or not countryside, but, you know, the hills. I, it, he almost died here, basically. You ever heard the phrase hitting bottom? This is when he hit bottom. It, it was just a drug burn from the downward spiral tour, all 94, 95. They get off the road. They've made millions of dollars. They can do whatever they want. Everyone's kissing their butt. Why not live like Kiss for a while? The problem is, is it, it was coming to an end. You know, it's, you, you're going to end up a rock and roll casually if you don't stop. So yeah. this is an album that it's a double album. I think it sold 3 million of these, which means 6 million like regular records, right? Something like that. And they didn't tour for it. There was no tour for this album, no live shows because he needed to go clean up straight up. He was, I think the next time he really came out was 2004. They started recording with teeth and that was a different era of the band. Heroin boy was gone. Now he's, you know, married family in shape, got a new lineup. The whole thing about with teeth was they recorded in sound city, which is an analog studio. And Trent Reznor was the only person ever allowed to bring a pro tools rig into sound city. If you've never seen the sound city documentary, I cannot recommend that enough. So he did turn it around later on, but this album here, no one knew. It was a big question mark. And it, it, it wasn't just him. It was the whole lineup. It was They were existing in the lower frequency. Mm -hmm. You know, of, like bad stuff was going to magnetize to them because of the way they were living and what they were doing. The rumor is, the word on the street, with your man on the street, is that once upon a time in Los Angeles, before he moved to New Orleans, that's where he moved after this, Sharon Tate's sister saw Trent Reznor at a gas station, went up to him and asked, why are you exploiting my sister? And he had no answer. And he moved shortly thereafter. But oh, he couldn't. damn. Yeah, yeah, that'll <laughs> shut you up. But the other rumor is, is the door where they wrote Le Pig on it, you know, in the living room. He has that in the house in New Orleans. So it, it was a good move to get out of that. It could have ended here. Thank the Lord it didn't. So next week in part two, we're because that's the other thing I want to split it in half. It's a double album. We got a lot to go through here. So we're going to talk about the music next week. But now we painted the picture of why 1999 was a lost year for an iconic front man. Thank the Lord he pulled it out. Here on. Yep. Man on the street. Man on the street. Man on the street. 
I forgot one thing. One last Bingo. note. And it's about, this is the whole tie up the bow about the iconic front men, okay? So let's call it recovery, right? He's in recovery from 99 to 2004. Gets it together after. Those five years where he wasn't around and wasn't in the scene and wasn't making new music, what happened then? That was Limp Biscuit. That was The Strokes. That was the Baja Men. That was an ocean of garbage when one of the tent poles of the business wasn't there. He's an important guy. Yahtzee. <laughs> and that, oh, sorry, wait, do we have to do the tag again? We're like, Man on the street. <laughs> had to do it and make it all come back. It's <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Brian. Uh, yeah, my funny comment on uh, Nine Inch Nails is uh, the start of high school, early '90s. The kids in the know for the indie music and the and the stuff like you know that were listening to Bauhaus and and club stuff, and they were kind of getting into yeah. Nine Inch Nails. They started writing Nine Inch Nails on their Jansport backpacks, a little Jansport pouch. You could like color block yeah. in sections and make the nin of nine inch nails then by the end of high school you had people who had never even listened to nine inch nails that thought that that was just a cool thing to do to your backpack so our, our high school was just full of nine inch nails jansport backpacks but maybe 10 people actually listened to, to, you know at the time it was pretty funny it was more of a visual trend than a music trend that happened exactly or a signal to each other of, hey i'm down you know that kind of mm -hmm. thing <laughs> for what i have no idea yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> who knows Not there but <laughs> i saw the other cool kid doing this um I'm looking forward to next week. I, I like that we've got a teaser for next week's uh, Man on the Street hey, here. We, everyone, thank you very much for always saying we have high production values and we put a lot of work into the show. We do. But, like, this thing is not orchestrated out. <laughs> it's so much of it's just last second. And, yeah, that <laughs> this totally was. We just split it in half the last minute. Uh, seven and seven says, uh, Brian needs to rant more and we need another encore. <laughs> I th but you know what I think we need to do? I think it's time we need to release the prisoner. You guys, you guys ready? Yes. Yeah, maybe we'll uh, stop with all this thunder. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Nandor, it's down in the brig. You ready, Nandor? Yeah, he, yeah, he looks, he looks ready. I, I say it's time we uh... release the prisoner. Welcome aboard, Nandor. There he is. I'm out. I'm out. Thank you for letting me out. <laughs> It's good to see you. Uh, everybody, uh, put your hands together for Nandor. This is his second time on the show, and I think he's our second guest to make a return appearance. That's right. Awesome. When the well, time club I'm comes, to be here. we will be stealing the Five Timers Club from Saturday Night Live. And so he's, he's the leader <laughs> right now. <laughs> That's right. Hey, yeah, don't, thank you don't for having his me. Ego. He's got an ego, Brian. We don't need to make this kid think he's any more uh, special than he is. Crush that self-esteem as hard as possible. Yeah. He, just, he just gave me three more invites to your show. <laughs> right there. Not intentionally, but I suppose I did. <laughs> Shoot. Well, once they're out there, they're out there. There's yeah, I know. We can do. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Eric the Guapo he says that's a cool background. Yeah, I'm assuming. He's, yeah, he's talking about uh, here. We're going to show it off for a second here. Uh, Nandor has yeah, his is... a great background, but then also his uh, the book over here, Lifeline. He also has the poster mm -hmm. of it on the wall behind him. I'm guessing, and that's how that. Yeah, it's my. It's actually my my banner for it when I when I go to conventions and stuff. Okay. So I just put that behind me. Yeah, yeah, and then I got my seasons one right here too. Nice. Very cool. Uh, yeah, real sharp looking. I love the dude. Just I'm appreciating nice that uh, Marvel Star Wars comic book. Oh, here. sorry, John. <laughs> yeah. You want me to? Uh, yeah, go back yeah, to that. This... You want to? Oh, that Star one? Wars. Yikes! Star yeah. Wars number one. Because um, Marvel, the first what six yeah. issues was just basically the movie. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it came out. It came out before the movie came out too. Yeah, the uh, big winners so. of the original Star Wars merchandise were Marvel Comics, Tops, the the card company, and Kenner because their stuff was out in time for Christmas that year. Yeah. <laughs> no, seriously. Yeah, they they made to, millions and millions of dollars. <laughs> oh, never mind. Eric was talking about John's. He says oh, that floor oh, looks okay. like it's made of <laughs> premium particle board. <laughs> <laughs> Talk gotcha. about man, that's uh, made of adamantium. He's like, oh man, where do I get me some back to it, some blinds like that? Oh man, it's because I'm looking brand new today. That's why I'm feeling brand new. Is that how you got those eagle eyes? <laughs> you got the bald eagle eyes. You were like, oh, 
I see a Star Wars comic in the background. I'm like, telling you, it, it brought back my youthful vision. You know, I'm telling you. Yeah, brand new. I grant many, many wishes here. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? Well, hey, why don't we take a second? Uh, because you're you're old school, to, you're young, but you're you're old to us. Why don't you tell anyone in the crowd who doesn't know who you are a little bit about yourself? Of course. Uh I'm Nandor Fox Shaper. I'm a comic book writer. I've been writing comics for about five years now. Uh I started right out of high school. I ditched college and went right into comic book writing because that's the safe thing to do. And um yeah, <laughs> that's what like, your, your mother said I, to do that. You know, she's like <laughs> Oh yeah, oh yeah. I'm on the other uh, side of it. Part of me regrets college. I, I gotta be for <laughs> real. It's like I could have done something else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I uh yeah, so I've made three graphic novels so far. Uh I've done four or five campaigns for all my books um and yeah i'm uh, on to my my next project and i'm excited to be here to talk about it um and yeah i've been uh you know trying to get out there more and talk to more people and and um you know be more of a present face in the indie community because this community is amazing and and i love other independent creators and i love helping other independent creators and this is uh, this is what I want to do. This is this is the dream. One other cool thing now that I have eagle eye vision, like the black smoke coming off of your uh, your book yeah. is going right into the. <laughs> I'm glad you know. Did that on purpose? I oh it. yeah! Oh yeah! I caught it! I caught it! You got it. That's right. Start calling me Hawkeye now. But Jay Lee, <laughs> that's what I meant. Now I can't see it, but now I see it. Mm. Gotcha. Um, okay, sorry. I was uh, I'm re I was reading the chat. Um, we we have pulled up Manchild, the newest product from uh, from Nandor, and I'm I'm really excited about this. Uh, like I do with many people that I know I'm going to have on the show, I've slightly been ignoring you on other streams um, because I want <laughs> this to be the fresh presentation to me. I don't want to fake my reactions yeah. to things. I don't want to if you know. Yeah. I, I I wanted it to be fresh. So why don't you? Uh, to just take us from the start like uh what what is manchild i'd love to manchild is something i've been working on uh for about two years now i've been writing it on and off i wrote the first issue about two years ago and i let it sit for a while as i was working on seasons and after um we got production all good for volume two of seasons. I started to write again. I started to work on the series again. And um, it's, it all started uh, with the death of Stan Lee. And after he passed away, I was really uh, devastated by it because I never got to meet him. I always wanted to, uh, there was actually a time where uh, I was going, I went to a convention that he was supposed to be at, but he was too sick to attend. So he never showed up and I never got to see him. And that was always something that, I wanted to do because he's always been a part of my life. I mean, inspiring me and, and reading his books and always uh, just being a really great creator. I mean, everyone knows who he is. And, and of course, you know, he needs no introduction. But um, I thought the world without Stanley was a lesser world. And I wanted to do something in his honor, something that, you know, he would look at and be like, that's fun. That's exciting. That's cool. And also, I wanted to look at his life and, um, uh, kind of sprinkle some of his life and, and who he was in a comic. Um, so that's where Manchild started. And uh, it uh, is going to be a six issue limited series. This is the first issue. This is the campaign for the first issue. And it tells two stories simultaneously. You're going to be reading two stories at the same time. Uh, one takes place in the Silver Age inspired universe that follows the captivating monarch crier as he battles his arch foe, Professor Pilgrim. And then the other story takes place in the modern day world where you follow Rufus Boston, who is uh, who's us. He's he's the guy at the comic shop every Wednesday. He loves comics. He goes out with his friends, goes to the latest summer blockbuster. He uh, lives and breathes this stuff, but he's in his 30s. He lives in his parents' basement. He is still a virgin. Um, he is he is the man child. Um, but uh, also, is that really a bad thing? And that's the question that I pose to everyone. And also how these two stories connect is a mystery for the reader to discover. Okay. I'm going to say my first, my first uh, zig away from the book was like, I'm like, I don't know if I, I don't know about the title. 
I'm, I'm iffy on the title. Mm -hmm. You explained the book and I've zagged back to really, really <laughs> liking the title now. Like I really, really like the title now. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I liked the logo and this and that because um, I'm, I'm big on titles. So and uh, right, what, right. What's funny is sometimes that's just how it is, too. There's some, some of my favorite stuff. I'm like, I was iffy on the title and then, oh, now I love it and <laughs> stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, at first I didn't I didn't really know what this book was about. Uh, I knew, I right. heard a little bit about some of the hints uh, of the story and stuff, but um, very interesting. I think it's going to be a really fun way to like just explore stuff like uh, fandom, creativity, like mm -hmm. the inspiration exactly. and yeah. influence and stuff like that. Yeah, um, it's it's uh, it really is a celebration of the medium uh, and also a examination of how comics started and where they've ended up and how heroes have changed over the years and so um it's looking at the trajectory of the medium itself and uh rufus the the guy in the modern day and his friends like he talks they talk about stuff that we talk about in the comic and so you're gonna find a lot of relatability and a lot of relevant issues that people are talking about in the comic book uh you know culture today so i think uh it's going to be really timely for people so i like now, that word you use celebration because it, there, there's a look it up for yourself there's some controversies about stan lee in his career right and you're exactly, not coming through, at exactly. least i'm not interpreting yeah. you coming from that angle of here's the dirt or we're gonna get him this time it's like no here's no. the good stuff <laughs> yeah you know? Yeah, I actually, so uh, before I started writing this, uh, I read three or four biographies on Stan Lee's life, and I uh, did a lot of research into that controversy and the, the Lee Kirby and Ditko debate and all that stuff, because I wanted to look at it as objective as possible, because uh, after he passed, I saw a lot of people that were just hating on the guy and uh, after really, he died. Oh, Stan Lee, yeah, Stan, Stan Lee was just a thief, like, you know, who cares about him? And I was just like, now wait a second here. Like well, now wait a second. Let, let, let's let's actually look at the history of this. And so I wanted to look into things for myself. And um, yeah, and that's actually a conversation that characters have in the book about. Oh, cool. Um, Very cool. That's cool. Yeah. So so yeah. I mean, in the first issue there. Um, yeah. I mean, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of personal experience. A lot of things that I've drawn from my own life that is in this book that takes place with Rufus and his character and, and his friends and stuff. So you're going to find a lot of things that uh, are, I'm going to be hinting to and things that you you've seen in the news or, you know, things like that. So it's uh yeah, it's, it's going to be something else. I think it's going to turn a lot of heads and make a lot of people look at it a little, a little more deeper. Yeah. I am one that I used to, when I was younger, I was, I went through many phases on how I felt about people like Stan Lee or Kane or, or yeah. the such. And, uh, my experience now is that you know guys like Bob Kane were were worse than, than Stan yeah. Lee and stuff like that, um, or much yeah. worse. And but then also there was there was a time you know uh, where you know I'm thinking like oh someone like Stanley didn't didn't uh, like oh he screwed over Jack Kirby and this that. But then again, when you really start digging into stuff, you're like oh Jack Kirby made some really bad contractorial decisions for yes. himself. Yeah, like, yeah. Jack he made, Kirby. And, Jack you know. Kirby basically did the equivalent of what Scottie Pippen did to himself with the Bulls. And then you could, but you could look at the owners and the owners are <laughs> like, man, those guys are jerks. Yeah, Scottie was by, so underpaid for his, but that's the contract he signed. Well, and not yeah. to drag the real world into this, but let's drag the real world into this. One of my favorite <laughs> facts about Jack Kirby, I don't remember what unit he was in, but he landed on Normandy Beach. You know, the first 20 minutes of Saving Private Ryan? But he was there 12 days, what, D minus 12 or plus 12? 12, 12 days after. Mm -hmm. For 12, everything was still there on the beach. Dead bodies, ammo cases, all the explosion. Nothing could be cleaned up. We had to keep going into Germany. He had to walk through the middle of that going Ooh, into yeah. France. And so my point is, is I think a lot of those bad contractual decisions is he wasn't feeling so good when he came back. He should have taken like 12 months off and rode his bike to Montana or something instead of just jumping into another industry. But they well, hindsight's also, 2020. I That's say fair. that as a, a huge Kirby fan. Like he is my number oh, one. Oh yeah. Like he is yeah. my absolute number one. I would choose him over anybody else uh, day or night. But it, it was that thing of me just like, getting older and realizing the nuances in the world and like, you know, uh, yeah. 
somebody's legacy might be more powerful than that thing that you think is a bad move they made and like that might be more important for you know like like positivity and so it's yeah. it's a whole weird thing so i think it's great to i think it's great that you're examining that in the story but i think it's also great that you're you're focusing on what inspired you like how it affected you yeah yeah and I mean, that somebody I, your age can still be this affected by stan lee <laughs> that's incredible no, it's amazing i know and that's that's something that really stuck with me because growing up uh you know, you'd see him in the in the in the cameos, and he was always there. He was always a presence uh, in in the movies, and he was always someone that I loved seeing and I loved hearing because he just had a personality and a way to make you excited about uh, Marvel comics and about his characters and about uh, just creating comics in general. That you look at it, and it's it's actually quite a miracle his story and just how he he felt like this wasn't that big of a deal, like making comics, you know, I mean, it wasn't respected when he was making comics. Mm -hmm. uh, he wanted to do his own thing. He didn't want to keep making comics. And it's crazy to think that someone who didn't want to be in this industry changed it forever, made it, I mean, made it what it was really. And um, that was just one of the most fascinating aspects about him. Now, do we want to play your trailer or did we already go over everything in the trailer? What do you what do you feel? It's up to you. You know, buddy. yeah, I, it's one of those things where like the trailer really gives off a lot of info. So I think I think we could go for it. I think it'd be I think it'd be cool. And I do want to say what's really cool about this trailer is the score that you hear. The, the music in it was composed by my brother. So this is all original oh. music that he <clears throat> made. And um, he's a he's an amazing musician. We play in a band together. Uh, what? So, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, man. What? Ryan, we didn't know this, did we? <laughs> no, I know this is all that. new. I knew yeah, that because, hearing this now. Uh, because maybe I stalk him a little bit on social media. Oh, Mr. <laughs> Irvy knew. Back to the well, side. Mr. Irvy doesn't run our music department, though. <laughs> no, nope. that's right. That's right. No, actually, when you guys were talking about Nine Inch Nails, you know, I was in the back and I was just like, Oh my gosh, I would love just to like talk about music. Like, this is awesome. <laughs> oh, okay. Well then guess what? We'll stop talking. We'll stop promoting man. No, no. Right no. Now. <laughs> no. We don't need Never to buy this comic book. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, forget command. man child, only nine inch nails talk. No, I'm just kidding. Let's uh I think everyone in the chat would like to see the trailer too. Let's let's mm -hmm. do it. It's a funny thing. Very often I'll come to stations like this and, and do interviews. And I can't tell you how many times I've gone, let's say, to a television station and the cameraman, somebody in his 30s, maybe, or late 20s, will walk over to me. It makes me feel very old because I, hey, Stan, gee whiz, I've been reading your stuff since I was 14. Tell me, how's the Hulk doing today? November 12th, 2018. I was at my day job like any other ordinary weekday. All at once, my phone started buzzing and I was getting calls and texts from friends. They all had the same thing to tell me. Stan Lee died. It was devastating. I wasn't prepared for Stan Lee, a man so instrumental in making my childhood, as well as millions of others, a childhood filled with imagination and possibilities, to be gone. A man whom, through his creations, gave me something irreplaceable. A place to escape and become inspired. I miss Stan Lee and needed to grieve, but being the writer I am, I also needed to give back. To do that, I needed to rediscover who he was, what he did, how he did it, and why. This is how Manchild came to be. Hi, I'm Nandor Fox Schaefer. I'm a comic book writer. I published three graphic novels through Kickstarter, and I am so thrilled to finally bring my new project, Manchild, to the world. Manchild is going to be a six-issue limited series. It is an homage. All right, I think that's yeah, that's good, man. 
Yeah, because it just it's just me like pitching the book, which I can do here. So that's all right. <laughs> Heck yeah. No, and you're already oh, you only have 15 days to go. So we're not we're usually not like the the QVC kind of channel, but just a little bit today. A little bit today, because we really want to see this project back. We really want to yeah. see it, it backed sooner than later. And uh man, 80 backers, Definitely. more than 50%. I mean, you're obviously gonna make it. But uh, like I said, sooner than later is always. Uh, yeah, it'll just, not take just for our advantage, folks you know? that watch, just remember you got to get on this. It's not. It's not. There's no in demand option. That's right. So you got to oh, get it. I right. did forget that. I got to get it. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, if we don't, if we don't hit it, we don't make it, and that's you know, I mean, and and if if you don't get it now, you won't be able to get it later. So yeah, it's really really important to get it now. Well, let's look over the project a little bit too, because uh, this is another thing I was I was iffy about. I never mind I, I never mind being honest on this show. So you said yeah. early on, you oh I got these you know, big name creators, and you know I've worked in the with the, a lot of big name people, and uh, most of the time I'm I haven't been impressed with their personalities. The nastiness you see on Twitter is kind of how it's always been in comics. Yeah, it's just right now it's right. on Twitter. So you said you got these big name people. I was like, oh great, who's he going to be having? All the people you brought on board are not only people that I think are awesome creators, they're also really great people. They're not a part of like canceling people. These guys are just awesome comic creators that have awesome yeah. experience, have done great projects. And as far as I can tell, these guys have always been great. Uh, Tony Harris, I've hung out with him a few times at, at, at con parties, had a good time. Nick Patara, I've spent Sweet. some time talking to. He's great. Um, I don't I know Welby... Uh, I know of Tom Riley, but the, these are all just fantastic covers. How'd you make them happen? Oh man, it was a long process. Uh, all of all of last year, I was uh, wanting to reach out to some of my favorite people and some of my favorite artists, and um, I thought this was the perfect book to do it because this book is about fandom. It's about being a comic book fan, and I'm such a fan of these artists and i thought this is the perfect project to do that and to try to reach out to people that i'm fans of and so um i what i did is i just was incredibly persistent i emailed them i contacted them in every which way i could on social media or their you know on their website um and i was just really persistent and uh you know uh you had to be there you know right place at the right time when they're like commission uh list opens or you know i would just keep keep my eyes peeled on these creators and see what they're doing and see if they like the project. And so I sent them all of them. I sent, you know, all the pages that had been completed. I sent them my pitch for it and told them, you know, I don't want your name being on this book unless you like it, unless you like the book, unless you think that it looks good and that you want to put your name on it. So thankfully um, these four artists, these four professional artists said yes. And um, I'm just so thankful to, to have them on this, this project. Yeah, I mean these are these are great. This these Nick Patara awesome. one, like I chose this one for the the uh, the thumbnail, um, just because it's yeah. so much fun. Like <laughs> it, it looks know, like a classic no. comic cover that like would be included in amongst the greats or something, you know? Yeah, yeah, totally. He was he was one of the most excited people that I worked with on this, and he was like. He was like, oh, man, I want to do like Professor Pilgrim, you know, and, and have him uh, in that pose and just have this really exaggerated look, which is, uh, you know, I love about Patara's work. And like, uh, you know, it just it just is brilliant. Yeah. No, they have exactly. just got two words about these guests or featured artist X Machina. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, um, I uh, Tony Harris, he, uh, you know, he sent me the original artwork for that cover, so I have it framed uh, in my in my office here. You know, oh wow, it's beautiful. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna go about 10, 15 minutes extra if people can, uh, if everyone can hang on for that, because um, I want to ask a couple questions about characters. Then I want to see you. I want you to pick like the main perk you want you want people to back. Yeah, uh, including myself. Yeah. And then we're going to do a lightning round before we uh, before we kick you off the, the ship. So you, we Sweet. learned a little bit about Rufus here. Um, I'm very curious about the Monarch Crier. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, he is the superhero of New York City in this the Silver Age inspired universe. And um, he's a biochemist. Uh, his design is actually based on a very, very young Stan Lee, like what we saw in the video. So his mm -hmm. uh what he looks like in the comic is like a very young Stan Lee and um, his name's George Jeffrey. Uh, he got the alliteration going for him there. And mm -hmm. uh, he, um, he, 
you'll find out about his origin and the way that he's able to have these abilities. He has, you know, monarch butterfly wings. Uh, he also that voice, that little voice box that's on him there uh, is a voice amplification device. So similar to, you know, maybe Black Bolt or Banshee, uh, he can uh, emit this call, this cry. So that's why his name is the Monarch Crier. Uh, okay. And um, he, uh, you know, he has heightened senses. Uh, he's a he's a character that is very much in the vein of a classic Reed Richards or Bruce Banner that you would read about in the Lee Kirby era of comics. And so everything about his personality and what he does and why he does it uh, is based on, uh, you know, a Hank Pym and, and ty- those types of characters. Nice. Those are the characters I wanted to be as a kid. I was like, yeah, like Bruce Banner, Mr. Fantastic. Yeah, and like, me too. Me too. Yeah. But see, Nandor, you're smart enough to be those characters. I grew up and realized, <laughs> oh, I'm more like the Ben Grimm or the Johnny Storm. Okay, that's more of my level. All right. But those are hey, always my favorite everyone, characters. Like, Yeah, guys, everyone needs a Johnny Storm or a Ben Grimm, man. Yeah. Um, like, I knew the scientific words, but I was like, I don't know what it means. I just know how to say it. <laughs> and then uh, also uh, fill me in on Professor, Professor Pilgrim here because he's super interesting. Yeah, he is, uh, you know, the the bad guy, the villain of this story. And uh, he's inspired by uh, the great classic supervillains like Dr. Doom and Red Skull and uh, the Wizard from Fantastic Four. Um, characters like that that are incredibly, uh, you know, geniuses, but also very um, ambitious in their their need to uh, kind of dominate the world and world domination or at least... Uh, what makes Professor Pilgrim really interesting is he doesn't like the world. And so he's creating a new one. And so he has his own island in the North Pacific. And he's bringing people to his island, to his city. And he is trying to build a better world. And, you know, what does that look like? Uh, and that's something that the Monarch Crier has to face and has to find his motivations for in this series. Gnarly. Love it. That's awesome. Um, yeah um all right so before we get into to pick a perk uh does anybody have any any questions about the characters or anything whether it's the chat or the or the or my or my crewmates i did i I I can't remember because i am (laughs) have my head on my backside today (laughs) um sorry john were you saying something no more of just a statement i mean i i love uh i love the care and the um, remember. <laughs> just, just the work that Nandra puts in, you know, to really bringing this world to life. I mean, it's, it's really a great, you know, like you said, it's a great celebration of Stan Lee, but it's just a, a great celebration of that era of storytelling. And like, I'm looking at this and I feel the same way, you know, when I would pick up, you know, books from that era. You know, yeah. and you're just like, man, there's something magical about this. You know, there's there's something, you know, there, there's that uh, fifth element that's in these books that you're just like, man, this is awesome. I remember oh, yeah, what I was going to ask. A... <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Okay. I may be reading into this. I detect a Venture Brothers influence, but that could be a coincidence because they were also a celebration of the Marvel Universe. Is that intentional or is that a happy accident? That's a happy accident. I've heard of the Venture Brothers and I've seen a little bit, but um, I haven't really watched it to have enough of a of an influence from it. That that's crazy because when you ever do watch it, it I, want, I don't want to say similar, but down the street from each other. You know? Yeah, right, e- right. Exactly. Like I, I wouldn't have thought like you ripped them off, but I wouldn't have been surprised if like Brian, uh, I wouldn't have been surprised if you said you were a fan of Venture Brothers. Yeah, yeah that's um, wow. That's, <laughs> I'm glad I asked now. Glad I remember. And, and they, much like Nondor, they're very good at what is the surface quality of something that somebody's going to like? What's the visual appeal here? What's it? And then like, what's the real meat behind it? You know? So yeah. like, Venture Brothers, like especially you've watched the first few episodes, you might not think they're going to get very philosophical, but that show gets really, really <laughs> philosophical in ways that other Each animated shows season is better than really the last. Not. Watch it like The Sopranos. It um, all flows together. It's mm, pretty nice. incredible. Uh-huh. Um, 
And uh, yeah, so it's it's quite a compliment that that your book has that vibe. It also has the vibe like I'm with John where there's this uh, classic comic vibe. But then like the the Rufus parts and stuff like all of this feels very like 15 years ago, Vertigo comics to me like Uh, this, like interesting indie like. um, And that may just be the way that your artist uh, is capturing the real world aspect of it Mm -hmm. um which you know this is not fantastical like look at this double page spread this double page spread is impactful without being superhero fantastical you know so it's this yeah real down to earth like heavy moment um man that's it's uh, okay i was going to move us on to the perks but i got to know more about your artist first that's something i almost (laughs) forgot about who is providing these lovely lines and colors so uh jay mazar is the artist and he's doing everything he does the the pencils the inks the colors um he's a one-man army when it comes to the artistic visuals for this book um and so uh we've been working on this project for a while and we worked on the character designs together and we really have been working on this from the get-go together so um he's an amazing talent uh he i wanted to find someone that um reminded me of like a Greg Smallwood or, or Chris Somney or someone like exactly, that. Exactly. That yeah. Give that, that, that could bridge that, you know, classic to modern day that makes you just kind of look at it and make you want to look at it just a little more. Like you just want to, like you look at it and the more you look at it, the more you find things that really surprise you. Um, so yeah, that's, um, that's him. And then the letterer I'm working with, his name's DC Hopkins and he's worked with, boom dark horse marvel dc he's worked with all the big he's worked uh, with alterna we, and... we, i know dc yeah 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 and dc is awesome he's his, his lettering uh uh technique and and what he can do it's just it's just so professional and just makes it look even better hey welcome timothy olsen timothy olsen says uh yeah it reminds me of a really classic comic book like 60s style awesome. comic uh, that's it <laughs> you got it <laughs> and uh yeah jay lee reminding us uh venture brothers was a takeoff of johnny quest um that then expanded cool. into this like just love of marvel and comics and cartoons um it's just, not uh, influenced by dc or image you know <laughs> no <what I> mean? <laughs> yeah um and uh, yeah venture brothers also has a toth influence which ties us into our booty from beyond with uh the hernandez brothers um everything's coming back to the 60s today um Almost as if like there was this like peak of talent and draftsmanship and writing and going Manson. on. <laughs> and Charles Manson. <laughs> it's all full circle today, man. It is all full circle. Um, yeah. Okay. So now we're going to get into what is, we need one perk. What's a, a perk that you recommend uh, where we can get all kinds of stuff? Yeah. Um, I one. highly recommend uh, the Foxhole Comics bundle, which is all of my books at a discounted rate. Uh, you get uh, mm-hmm. three graphic novels. So you get Seasons Volumes 1 and 2, and then you get Lifeline and then Man Child Issue 1. Um, it's over 300 pages of comics for $85. Whoa, um, that's a lot and... of comics. That yeah, a that's lot a lot of com- comics. It's a that lot a... of comics. All oh, right. Yeah, because... Um... I need to double check if I backed seasons. That's one of the things on the show. I keep forgetting like to back stuff because mm-hmm. I have the person on the show and then it's clicked off in my head that I've backed them. And then, <laughs> then they're like, Hey, my campaign's closing. I'm like, congrats. I'm like, which one did I get? And then I'm like, ah, I didn't back it yet. Um, yeah. So I need to double yeah. check on seasons. And I know for sure, I don't know anything about lifeline. I know all about cool. seasons because we had you yeah. on and it's fantastic. But, yeah. Um, what's the quick pitch on lifeline? Lifeline is this life story of this character, but through the eyes of people that um, are his closest friends or family. I worked with seven different artists from all around the world, and each chapter is drawn by a different artist. And uh, it takes place in a different decade of this person's life. So you uh, see him as a very small boy and then all the way up to an elderly man, and you see the life that he lives and the... um, crisis and the things that he goes through it's a very simple drama uh but it's a really uh powerful story awesome well that looks like the incredible pick for today it's only only 85 plus shipping uh foxhole comics bundle you get seasons you get lifeline and you get the first issue of Manchild. yeah that's right 
And that's uh, the Jay Mazar is his name cover. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's a standard cover. Uh, if you do uh, want to, uh, what's cool with Kickstarter now is they do have add ons now. So if you do want a variant cover, you know, if you're like, oh, I want this Tony Harris variant cover alongside this bundle, you can add it on there. And, and there you go. Nice. And they're also you can be drawn in uh, to the story, which I think would be awesome. And 200, you get uh, original art from the book. Oh, he's doing original art too, not just digital. Nice. I love that. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. That's very exciting. Um, very cool. And it looks like you've got all kinds of other great perks at different levels. They got a retailer bundle, the different variants. Um, all yeah. very affordable. Yeah. Only 20 and 15 for these variants. All right. Yeah. Um, How many and pages then, again, Nandor? It, it's uh, it's 22 pages. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Excellent. Um, well, we are going to stop sharing this amazing project, even though I could sit there and look at those yeah, pages there, stare at all it. day long. <laughs> I'm really excited for this. Um, Thank and you. I, again, this, as everybody knows, I, I ain't lying. I keep this stuff fresh on the show for me. So a lot of that stuff was like brand new to me. Like I saw that you had pages on the pay on the, Mm -hmm. Kickstarter page, but I was like, we'll look at them on Monday. I got, I'm, I'm <laughs> too excited. Um, but now before we let you off the ship, everyone has to earn their way off the ship, Nandor. And, uh, All right. we're going to have a lightning round set of questions here for you. Are you prepared? I am prepared. I, I hope I can deliver on these. Well then, uh, much like Nandor has been bringing since the beginning of the show in the background of John's episode, uh, with the thunder and lightning, uh, we, uh, we are ready for lightning round. Answer as quick as you can, Nandor. Uh, don't think about it. Rapid fire answers. We add up the points and see how you compare to the rest of the guests this year. Um, okay. Mr. Blastbeat, would you like to go first? Okay, two of these questions I may have asked you last time, but pretend like it's all brand new, okay? <laughs> <laughs> right. You went a trip to Vegas. You're caller 10. What hotel are you staying in? Uh, the Flamingo Hotel. Good answer. Ooh. Okay. What is your favorite local comic shop of all time, past, present, or future? Oh, man. Uh, my local comic shop, the Antiquarium. I've been going there since I was like 10 years old. What town is that in? Jefferson City, Missouri. There we go. Shout out. In Missouri, head there. Last question. Doesn't have anything to do with anything. It's just for fun. Quentin Tarantino is my favorite filmmaker of all time. What is your favorite movie by him? Uh, Reservoir Dogs. Good answer. Oh, call. Damn, going with the one to start at all. Stuck in the middle <laughs> with you. Uh, That's nice right. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, round two of Lightning Round comes from Mr. Hervey. All right. We'll start with favorite comic book artist. Steve Epting. All right. Favorite Unusual answer. Stan Lee creation. No. <laughs> tick, 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 tick. Time is ticking by, Nandor. Oh, my God. You're losing points. Ant-Man. Ah. Sorry, repeat. Oh, my God. Ant-Man. Ant-Man? Okay. Ant okay. Excellent choice. And favorite character name in comics? Ooh. Like, like, their like the character's name or the like character's real name, name or any okay character okay name. yeah all right uh i'm gonna go with the thing oh that's, right. that's a great that one. is a good one nice um i i like goom which is uh another jack kirby creation one of his monsters <laughs> goom <laughs> Um, oh, my turn for questions. All right. Tick, 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 tick. Ah, my standard, Coke or Pepsi? Ah, uh, Coke. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Nandor. He's grown. Nandor has grown. He is a man. <laughs> um, they make a film of your life. Who plays you? Oh. Ian McGregor. Oh, oh cool. Good answer. choice. Wow. Good choice. Like, uh, nice handsome leading man but also he's not like it's not too guy can play you know he's he's can play that right. guy like all you know, right like good choice damn that was a good choice um okay so they've made the film of your life ewan <laughs> mcgregor is playing you who writes out of any comic writer living or dead past or present who writes the comic adaptation of your film jeff lemire 
Yeah. Oh, you're going smart with it. I, wow, that's going smart and trying to get sales with it. I see. Because um, <laughs> answers I was expecting. Uh, Stan Lee uh, was the first answer I was expecting. And uh, the second answer I was expecting was Nandor himself. Uh, ah, that's that's what I was, I was hoping. So uh, you have 64 points. That puts you in fifth place for the season. And uh, we'll let you know at the end of the season how you've done against everybody else. And uh, cool. This Andy has... gave a shout out to Steve Epting. That's a name I hadn't heard in a long time. A great artist, too. Yeah. That, like, I don't think about him enough. Uh, absolute mm -hmm. fantastic draftsman. And uh, but that does conclude. All right, Nandor, it's time for you to walk the plank. Why don't you tell people where they can find you and where you're going to be this week? Yeah, uh, please find me. Go subscribe to my YouTube channel, Foxhole Comics. It's where I do. Uh, I've been I've been doing my streaming. I've been uh, doing different videos and comic book writing. Uh, I also work with my artists, and we share updates with everyone on how everything's going. So yeah, I'm on YouTube there. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Nandor Fox Schaefer. Uh, and Instagram at Nondor Fox. So just type in my name. I'm probably the only Nondor that you know, so you'll find me. And <laughs> there you go. And uh, links that. for everything that Nondor described are down below. Uh, everybody say goodbye to him. It's time for him to walk the plank. Goodbye, Nondor. Nondor. I do hope you stick around you in the guys. water. We'd like to talk to you after. <laughs> there he goes. All right, Mr. Blasby, where are you going to be? Where can they find you? uh selling stuff on ebay hey let me let me grab something real quick because i got got a finger wag whoever bought this they're probably not watching now but you <laughs> hadn't paid yet so chop chop or i'm gonna relist it okay <laughs> get to it get to it peoples for shame look at me smh yep. <laughs> smh all right anything else mr blast no uh, we're good to go all right we'll see you later Mr. Hervey, where are you going to be? Where can they find you? Uh, you can find me at Beyond Time Inc. on uh, Twitter and oh, on Instagram it. and on YouTube. Um, I So Black Tiger, Hidden Dragon, we are, I believe, seven backers away from hitting 200. So if you're interested in the project and haven't picked it up yet, go ahead and do that. We should be going to print in a couple of weeks, maybe three weeks or so. And uh, I will be opening up a mailing list very soon for the next volume of Magna and a new property called The Posse. So there will be a two-in-one campaign. Ooh, nice. With Can't that, I'm ready to swim. Can't wait to see that. Now get out of here. All right, everybody. Now's the time of the show where we present you with Locals Only, where Ryan Kennedy, the manager of Alakazam, my local shop, makes a recommendation for you to pick up that is not a crowdfunded book. It's not a book we've uh, showcased on here or anybody we know. It's an indie book that you should check out when you show up on Wednesday. What's up, comic shippers? Other Ryan here from Alakazam Comics and Games in Irvine. Here this week on Locals Only, talking about Cain and Abel. By Shaky Kane and Crent Abel. This is a anthology that came out a few weeks ago, but I keep selling out of it, so I can't show it off till today. It's fantastic. It's a little anthology these two guys put together, telling horror stories, sci-fi stories. Uh, every one of them is all of rock and roll and just straight up power. Look at that! Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo! Check it out, Kane and Abel at your local comic shop. All right, everybody, thank you for joining us. Uh, make sure you join us next week. Our guest is Lucifer Storm. We're going to get Dark and Evil talking about his new project, Ed Gain Demon Hunter, as well as uh, Lady Satan and his other projects like that. So tune in next Monday, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 Eastern for that. And until next time, take care of yourselves. Hey. In all the tales they told to me, the rape herself, I'd do it see. And we all go down to the dead man's cove. Yar! Yar!